Hello, everyone. Hello. My slides on. Lost and found. That's today's uh, message. So you all know that. Uh, we, thanks for the introduction, and thank you very much for inviting me to uh, Petra Church. This is my second time here. The first time I was here. I was uh, Pastor John Cole was preaching, and I was introduced to Pastor John. Uh, I think this year only. And uh, amazing things, you know. I met him before, and he showed me some of the videos of the amazing things he has uh, been doing in Philippines. And I'm sure tomorrow or next week, he's going to report to you, right? He just came back from Philippines. So anyway, today's message is lost and found. And this is my website. If you're, uh, how, many, how many of you here will consider yourselves foodies? Like, you live to eat. <laughs> wow, only so few, ah. Uh. Uh, the rest of you just eat to live, is it? Yeah. Or are you all just saying that because you are in church, you don't want your pastor to know <laughs> that, that, that you actually uh, enjoy food so much that you just live to eat? So I consider myself, I, I like to live to eat. Lah. If I don't have any good food that day, I don't eat. So that I can save my calories. That's why my motto is, never waste your calories on yucky food. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the question that I have, Ask of me most of the time is this. How come uh, you as a doctor uh, can be a foodie? As if doctors don't eat or doctors don't enjoy food. Now, there's this funny uh, public uh, understanding or, or thinking that just because you're a doctor, you know, every time you go to see the doctor, right? Doctor always say, ah, yeah, I cannot eat this, cannot eat that, cannot eat this, cannot eat that, correct? And then here comes this doctor online uh, telling you, you go and eat chakwe tiao, you go and eat siyoba, and all these things. And everybody say, hey, how come this doctor tell me to eat all these things? I'm not telling you as a doctor. I'm telling you as a foodie. Because before I became a doctor, I was a foodie. I grew up as a kid, right? I like to eat my luncheon meat and porridge. Uh, that's what I had for lunch today. I, 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 I like all these things. So just because I'm a doctor doesn't change who I am. Correct? And so they asked me, how come I... Uh, 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 have this uh, love for food. And you know, earlier this year, I was in Chaozhou, you know, I went back to Teochew. Any, how many Teochew people here? Wow, oh, kakinang, kakinang, kakinang. Okay, I went back to Chaozhou, and I, it wasn't my plan, but I just know that my father always told me that we have a village in somewhere in Suatau. They call it Suatau, but they don't really know what Suatau means. Actually, Suatau is another district. Chaozhou itself, Chaozhou city is a city. So when I went there, I only had this one name, Li Nye Tio Ang. I said, I don't know what these words mean. I don't know, even know whether I can find my village or not. So as I, when I, we went into uh, Chaozhou, we got off the train, and then this person met me. So the first thing he asked in Teochew, he said, oh, which village are you from? He said, ah, Li Nye Tio Ang. Oh, Li Nye, what Thai? What is your surname? Tan. Oh, Li Nye Tan, what Thai, what Thai, what Thai? 20 minutes from here. Wow, I was so excited. Huh? Wow, I managed to find my village. Uh. Even my father hasn't been to my village. right? So we, we took the car, we went there, and we found the village. And then in the village, uh, in the center of the village, is this uh, building that has been there for hundreds of years where all the days uh, of all the generations, right, all the records are kept there. So I looked up my record, right, and then I found out Actually, uh, in the past, uh, one of my ancestors uh, was also a big foodie, you know. <laughs> and he, he served the emperor. He was an imperial food taster. <laughs> Look like me, right? <laughs> yeah, he was an imperial food taster. And what he did was, he would go throughout the TNC, uh, you know, go out throughout TNC uh, and go and find the good food. Then when he find the good food, he'll come back and then he'll uh, report to the emperor. So then he'll bring the food back to the emperor <laughs> and then let the emperor taste. <laughs> By now you should know that it's a tall story. The Taozo story is real. <laughs> the village is real. Okay, this one uh, is because uh, we, we did this skit as part of the, this TV series. Uh, Makan uh, Places, Lost and Found. Have, have you seen it? Yeah. yeah? Okay, if you say yes, it shows how old you are. <laughs> because young people don't watch TV nowadays, right? But you can still find it on Toggle. So anyway, Makan Places, Lost and Found. I mean, if you love food, uh, 
The worst thing, uh, last time, before there was internet, the worst thing is your favourite char kway teow. One day you go there and they say, hey, how come close? Hey, what happened to my char kway teow place? Right? Lost. Right? And then you, there's no way to find it. There's no internet. You can't just look up Facebook, look at their Facebook page, look at their web- website. So then you got to tang tia, tang tia, and then try to find out where they go. Then one day, la, one day, suddenly, a uh, few years already, right? Then your friend comes to you, hey, you want to eat so and so char kway teow or not? He said, huh? You found it, uh. where is it? Oh, it's so and so place. Wow, you're so happy, right? Lost and found. That's the title of today's sermon. <laughs> okay, as I go on, before I go on, uh, we want to read this passage of scripture. Who knows what story we're going to talk about? Zacchaeus. Wow, very good. Hey, church, very, very good. Okay, now for the distinction answer. Uh. Anybody know which gospel is from? Oh, okay. Here we go. The theologian, what a theologian. Okay, it's from the Gospel of Luke. So go to Luke and then go to chapter 19. If you all have your Bibles, I know you all don't, but you can bring out the phone, <laughs> phone Bibles. Okay, and let's read this story of Jesus and Zacchaeus. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful story. It is very simple and yet it's got very deep theological meaning. Okay, are you there? Luke chapter 19. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, I love this word. Every time Bible got this word. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. An amazing story of a man called Zacchaeus. Now, in, in, this, in this passage, right, it says that Jesus was entering Jericho and was passing through. So, those of you who have been to Israel, okay, when we read the Bible, all these places are real places, right? You go to Jericho, Jericho is the last city before Jerusalem. Jesus was heading towards Jerusalem to, to do the Passover, and it was during that Passover that he was crucified. Right? So this is the final journey, and he knows it. So he was passing through Jericho, and a lot of people were with him. Why are there so many people with him? Because this man was a miracle worker, Jesus. You know, just before this event, right, it was recorded that he raised a man from the dead. Now, if you raise a man from the dead, you think people, you know, word gets around, right? You say, hey, there's this miracle worker. He managed to raise someone from the dead. Of course, there's this big crowd who are following him. And just before he went to Jericho, he he even uh, uh, healed a blind man who was at the side of the road. His name was Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus called out to him, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus looked at him and said, What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus said, I want to see. And Jesus healed him. So the crowd were very excited. They were following this man who is a miracle worker, who is an amazing teacher. Every word that came out of his mouth was amazing, was life-giving. And they were following this man. So this man, Jesus, was moving across. He was traveling through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us there's this next character, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, three things we know about him. One, he's a chief tax collector. Okay, I, you know, tax collector, 
Nobody likes, well, nobody likes tax collector, especially when they come collecting taxes, right? How many of you would be very happy if suddenly you got an email from IRAS <laughs> saying that actually we checked your records and uh, you know, we found out that y there are some taxes that you're owing. Well, it's not always like that. We, we, sometimes we got email from them saying, oh, you paid too much tax, we want to refund. Those emails are very good, but far in between. Right? Nobody likes ta tax collectors. In those days, it was even worse. Why? Because the tax collectors were what we call the pantu. You know, in, in World War II, uh, in, in World War II when uh, Singapore was occupied by the Japanese, those Singaporeans uh, who go and sell themselves to the Japanese and they work for them uh, are looked down upon as the pantu. So in those days, the tax collectors are the ones working for the Romans. And so they were hated. Because what the Romans did was, the Romans would say, okay, from this province, we want you to be able to collect for us this amount of tax, okay? You give us this money, we don't care how you collect your tax, how much you collect your tax. So all the tax collectors were very corrupt. So if they needed only to uh, collect XX amount, they'll collect XXX, and they'll tax you on everything. Last time also got goods and services tax. Oh. You, got, you got a cut, they'll tax you on the wheel, they'll tax you on the axle, you grow this sort of barley, don't know what, don't know what, they will tax you. It's, all, it's up to the tax collector to determine what to collect. So as you can see, tax collectors are not very well liked. And this guy was not just a tax collector. He was the chief of the tax collector. The head. Okay? And he was rich. Why was he rich? He was rich because he extorted people's money. And so he were, they were hated. So tax collectors... You know, the general public, whenever they walk across, uh, they will just like they pui on his, pui on their, even at them or whatever. Okay, they just don't like tax collectors. They consider them sinners as part of this group of people that you don't want to associate, don't want to touch. So Zacchaeus was a tax collector and he was very rich. And the next thing we learned about Zacchaeus was he is very small. He was very short. All right? So, so this guy wanted to see Jesus, and because he was very short, and because there were so, so many people following Jesus, he just oh, can't see Jesus. So what did he do? What did he do? Climb up a tree. How many of you have climbed a tree? Yeah, you're also showing your age because young people don't climb trees nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, in the old days, got no computer games, got no, uh, we climb trees for fun, right? Right? Okay, those people nodding their head, okay, my generation. Okay, so he climbed up a sycamore tree. Now, it's amazing the Bible is very precise. A Bible account uh, of this event is an eyewitness account. It's an eyewitness account because all the places that they describe are real places. You can go there today, you can go to Jericho, uh, and you can see all these places. And then when they say it's a sycamore tree, there really are sycamore trees in Jericho. Uh, this is called the Zacchaeus tree, and we've been there, so we, we saw the Zacchaeus tree. Now, this is not the exact tree, because uh, sycamore trees live about 400 years. So this would have been like uh, the great-great-great-grandson or grand tree of the original sycamore tree. But at least we know there are sycamore trees. So the sycamore tree is it's got branches that come up, but very horizontal. So Zacchaeus climbed up this sycamore tree, to see, uh, to have a look at Jesus. And the most amazing thing happened. Okay, he wanted to see Jesus. He didn't expect Jesus to see him, right? But the, the amazing thing happened when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he knew his name. He called him Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. Not only he knew his name, he knows he's a tax collector, I'm sure. And yet he wants to stay in his house. Now everybody around there, you can imagine the shock horror. Suddenly, Zacchaeus! Everybody, wow, still very excited, looking up, looking up. Oh, he's calling someone. Zacchaeus, then he said, oh, he's calling the tax collector. And what's he wants to be the tax collector? He said, I want to stay in your house. Everybody, like, how come you're going to stay at the house of a sinner? How can a holy man an amazing man, a rabbi, go and stay in the house of a sinner. But that's what he said to Zacchaeus, I need to stay in your house today. And they all grumbled. 
because he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, now, okay, they must have had dinner. Jesus and Zacchaeus might have had some, exchanged some words. Maybe he even touched him, felt his presence. Whatever happened, we don't know. When I go to heaven, I'm going to ask Zacchaeus, what did Jesus say to you that you're willing to suddenly, like that, nah, give half of your wealth away? I mean, just one meeting with Jesus. He said, okay, I'm going to give half of my wealth away because that half was cheated one. Nah. There was money that's not mine anyway. I wasn't, you know, I, I realized it's wrong to cheat and to extort. So if I've defrauded any, uh, uh, anyone with any money, I'll pay them back fourfolds. And Jesus said, today, salvation has come to this house. So a meeting with Jesus resulted in transformation. Meeting with Jesus resulted in transformation. And Jesus summarized the whole of the, the gospel, the Bible, in fact. What is the Bible all about? It's about God, or the Son of Man, God, Jesus, coming to seek and to save the lost. This is what the whole Bible is all about. God seeking and saving the lost. So, what do we mean by lost? Who has never been lost before? Okay, everybody telling the truth. You all been lost before, right? Huh? Last time before Google Maps, huh? Uh, men, uh, men and women, uh, okay, showing your age again, right? How many quarrels you had in the car? Because you're lost. It's very good Malaysia. Map. <laughs> we, we're lost. So you can be directionally lost. Huh? In the army, we call it balonglong. <laughs> Any army people? Am I right? I mean, my generation, we used to call it balonglong. <laughs> balonglong. <laughs> so the commander say, I don't know where we are. Balonglong. Uh, or you can be conceptionally lost, like what we call liabokyu. Uh, they're kind of lost. I mean, you, someone say something to you. I hope you all can still catch balls. Huh? Uh, you're lost. You're not lost, right? Uh, you, okay. When, but but if, if, uh, I re always remember in maths class, after like 15 minutes, I go, wow, <laughs> what's this one? <laughs> well, you already lost, really. That's how I became a doctor. <laughs> cannot do maths, cannot be engineer. <laughs> okay? So you can be directionally lost, you can be conceptionally lost, conceptual, concept, conceptual, kept, uh, conceptually lost. See, I was lost. And then, you can be spiritually lost. You can be spiritually lost. And when, uh, when the Bible says the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, uh, it's talking about people who are spiritually lost. Okay, and before I go on, I want to introduce you to two men that I met three years ago. They're going to tell you their story of how they were once lost and now what is life now that they have been found by Jesus. So uh, their names are Raven and Victor. You please give them a big hand. Okay, uh, Raymond will go first, and then Victor will come on. All right. You got slides, huh? Okay. Yeah. So, hi, hi guys. This is the paper. I summarized my life story in a few pieces of paper. <laughs> no, just not to bore you guys. So, uh, this is my simple slide. So, yeah, I am 31. I'm Raymond, and uh, this is my family. My wife, my two beautiful kids, yeah. So I had a rough childhood. <laughs> I had a rough childhood, not the typical type of uh, complete family like others. Uh, never seen my father before. So my, I don't have this father figure. I never seen my father. I, I, I don't even have any impression of... You may sing Lee here, here. No. God not ready to let me meet him. So, I, so yeah, his name is uh, Lee. Lah, huh? So, um... To make matters worse, right, because I don't have this father figure, I, I kind of like was revealed of a secret. Though. Like my grandparents, out of a mischievous act, when I was 11 years old, she said, you are, ah, if I know you're so naughty, ah, make that time sell you, don't take back. Yeah, huh? I said, what? You know, I was 11, I was like, what were you saying? Then, yeah, then I found out I was like, those days, 1987, ah, they, they, they don't sell, ah, they like give, but then they get some... 
monetary like ang pao or something like that. No, I was given thirty thousand. Uh, my grandparents, because my mum was very young. She, 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 she had me when she was fifteen. So yeah, my mum was very young. Then my grandparents said, "Oh, I have to, cannot, no." Then they sold me away. That was when deeply I I felt so unwanted, and then I felt like I was like something that is being thrown away, and then just kill to turn. No, don't know. My mum like and my aunt don't know cannot sleep well. Then they go back and then they make a hustle. They they I sometimes blame my I know I jokingly blame my mum lah to like take me back because from what I know they gave me to a pasen pasen panjang vegetable wholesaler, which be quite good to live if you did. He said, "Ang more true, wah, lau yu, ang more true, look, go kill a thing like what, young? Well, I'm just kidding. But now, Jing Hu true, but you hold lah. So, yeah. So, and then um, that was when I, I just my life had gone downwards. Oh, twelve years old, I was caught for short twelve shoplifting, Takashimaya. Then, fourteen years old to brief you, I'm not going to glorify all these things. So, fourteen years old, I got." Caught for stolen item, sent to boys' home for one year. During secondary school, I I I met my my ex girlfriend, now my wife. Yeah, so so, <laughs> so she's my wife now. Yeah, we went through ah uh, literally tick. This is a tick, uh, you know, tick. Last time we were dating teen, <laughs> tick and teen she went through with me. She, she very well versed, no? I mean, she went through a lot of prison, no? Boys' home. So she she knows a lot of prison. She knows how to go, and she's an express student. Wow, don't be shocked. But the mother, now the mother-in-law is so happy that you no, know, I've changed and everything. But last time, wow, the mother ah, uh, every day receives school calls say, wow, you're better. Don't let your son, your daughter be with this guy. Wow, then a lot of things happen. So we really went through a lot. Uh, 16 years old, I got uh, quit school, and then I got caught uh, at Geylang selling those cough mixture and everything. 18 year old, I got involved with. Motor vehicle theft, import and export parts from stolen vehicles. I got caught also. But my mum always loved me so much, right? Um, always would think that the sun is the angel in her eyes. She always think that you know one day he will change. And every time I just shed crocodile tears, she will hire, borrow or whatever just to get the best lawyer to help me. And I got off lightly every time. So um, I didn't mend my ways. So I became bolder. Twenty years old, during army, I I got caught for credit card fraud. It's just a life full of crime, um, because I don't, I I felt like you know if I can be sold for money, money is something that I feel that will give me worth, and that was when I always pursue the monetary things in the world, and uh, again because of the credit card fraud, I was sent to prison. Then, um, I was lucky. Ten months. I was in prison. I I was left after that. I, I was I was given my freedom back, um, but just after twenty three days of my release, ah, uh, that was the first time I went into a adult prison. What twenty three days later, I got caught again. Eh. Well, I, I tell you, I was so scared. I don't know what to do. Uh, but this time round, I like, got smarter in a way. I never got caught in Singapore soil. I got caught in international water. So got some other different things, jurisdiction difference. I prayed very hard that time. Wow, see me see him boom by. I just anything that can help me, you know. And I got a warning, lah, in a sense, to cut the story short. I was now if I'm get if I get caught for a criminal crime again, ah, I'll be placed five five years minimum, twelve years maximum. No need to go any court hearing or it's like a it's a criminal detention because of the past offences that I continuously have. And uh, yeah, so but praise God. Now I also go to prison now, but with a pass, I can peek, go in, go out like that. Now praise God, nah. So <laughs> yeah. So um, I promised myself back then uh not to you know I said I cannot get caught again. I must change. And then back then I didn't really know God lah. So I like okay, I change, I change. In fact, I actually got um smarter. When I was after my NS, I got smarter. I got married. Then after that, yeah, wow, so nice. My wife, my wife, pretty. Oh, my my mum always say, ah, now so so jia jing cute. Ah, 老了变憨直一些。But I say one one. My wife very still very pretty in my eyes, forever pretty. Yeah. So I then started my business from nothing. Ah, 
I falsely, falsely declare my income. Like I said, I become smarter. I submitted loans to buy six cars at one shot uh, so that the credit bureau cannot detect my, 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 my purchase. So six I submitted, they all think like this is my first time buying car. Then I bought six, all got approved. And then I started a car rental firm. Yeah, when I was 23. After my NS, after my prison, then yeah. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> one year later, I grew to 25 cars. Two years later, I got 40 over cars. Then after that, I also subsequently got a workshop. Then I got too rich, too young. 24 years old, I already got my bucket of gold already. I like, wow. But I thought that was, that was the start of my real life, I thought, no? But actually, it was the start of all the bad things. Uh, you ever heard of a test? You ever heard how to test a man and a woman? To test a man, you heard before? To test a man, right, you give the man everything. You know how to test a woman? You give the, man, you give the woman a man with nothing. I, I kind of failed that test. Uh. When I was given everything, I failed that test. My wife, when, I was, when she was given a man with nothing, she continuously go through all the prison, you know? So, lucky she's not here. <laughs> but she knows, uh. she knows I'm thankful. So, uh, as, I, as I earned more and more, I didn't realize I became more and more crooked. I, I always hang out with, I choose my friends over my family. I, I just, my priorities are all wrong. Then I hang out with the wrong people, I go out, I, I, I just do all the wrong things. To sustain that life, right? I became worse. I, this one come out on the news. I, car rental, I used to rip my customers off. So people, my car rental called dream car rental because it's, some people call it nightmare car rental. They rent car from me, I will, specific spot of damages, I'll leave it there so that wow, you come, wow, you see that, and then they come and then just take, just keep ripping off the customers who rent car from me. To sustain the kind of life, nothing to be proud of. Then we also use a lot of scare tactics. Then, um, but thank God now, God have changed me to become so loving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always so loving. <laughs> so, but need some people to agree. Uh, some, some will agree after they know me. Yeah. So, uh, and then just suddenly more and more problems start to start to happen. And then soon my family fell apart. And then I, I, I can give them everything. Like, like, wow, you stay in condo. We drive a good car. And we got a lot of car to choose from. Some more, no? Then we, I thought this is the happiness that I can provide and you, should, you guys should be like contented and then, wow, you know, I just need to, in the typical Chinese thinking last time, I'll think that all I need to do is work, I come back, I give you money, you don't have to say anything or you don't have to bother what I do after that. So my, my, my part is just, I provide your house, I pay for everything and everything, you know. But soon my family fell apart and back then, I never knew that I failed to truly give them what is most important, which is love. And... Yeah, then I resolved to gambling. Started what well, casino uh, high silang. I go there. Uh, I really, but yet I'm thankful for this because if it's not for this, I would not have realized. You know, everybody has a time. Back then, I was like residing at all these kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is. I need to explain this. This. Uh, this is after I became a Christian, right? I. So I, I, I kind of like stumbled a chance. I, I didn't know I can buy a casino report. So this is, was, you know, a, a very wise old man ever told me, he said, my Kuan Ye, jackpot. Who got played jackpot? No, I cannot break. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I just tell you, uh, the jackpot machine. Uh, uh, don't break. <laughs> okay. So the wise old man tell me, you know, my Kuan Ye, jackpot machine. Uh, wow, you can sui sui. Uh. You say, the hole so small. See me Cheng Hu Chu, see me Zhuna, see me Hong Chia, see me Boon inside I don't believe, no. Uncle Lung Wai Gao Gong Chi La. No, then I just keep playing. And then I tell you, really, this is electronic gaming, if you see. What to cheat pa go up cheat Cheng Dip Ke Ye Kang Le? Wow, what is, how to put 700,000 inside? I also don't, and I only took back 40,000. That means the rest all the machine makan Dip Ke Ye Kang Le, really. So, yeah, so this is, yeah, it was just a very short time only. Then, uh, this is my, this table games. So if you see table games, is 2.4 million. 
，哇，隆重射车，爱做射车哎 ，very cool 谈哦 ，no， I cheat a lot of people， so I do that a lot， but this is just the bad things。So when I was at this moment right， I was like， 哇。I was so lost already. I was really lost. I was like asking God, or whatever that I think was God back then, ah, to help me. And um, oh yeah, this one I have to show. No else than yeah, these the rooms that I stay in. All the you see, my daughter is there. My wife taking picture of this. All the 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 suites lah. The you know right? You know how you all know about this hotel? The what underwater? That one. Oh uh, yeah, so this one is like what thousand seven one night. Okay, then, um, at the brim of losing almost everything, with the last fifty thousand, I I prayed very hard. I prayed, I prayed. I I said, you know, if God you can help me, ah, uh, just you know, I I went to early morning. I went to uh early morning before dawn. I went to Topek Kong. Then after that, in the morning, I went to Kuning Bio. See me, see what boom pike up. Un really no, I wah host sale. I take the fifty thousand in my hand. I at my condo want to head to the casino and really just pay it to to really win back. You know, I thought that time lah. I was reminded of Jesus ah when I was in a put in a daycare center. No, they told me thank you Lord for the food we eat. Then I remember Jesus. I say, hey, wah. See me, see boom pike lah. I'm more sin ah we go team. So I just pray. So God, see you want to help me? I will become a better person. And he really. Really, I never love you. He really, really. After I prayed, ah, he really helped me. How he helped me, no? He helped me lose everything. I never lose money so fast before. Kebo teng ah, wah lama. I just but back then I didn't know. But after I realized, oh, really, God is at work. So what kind of lama? My 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 long pay ah. So you want to help God will help you one. I tell you. So with that, ah, yeah. I kind of like after that I, I I was suicidal. I wanted to end my life, but before that I wanted to jump. I suddenly received a message. My wife said she got she's con she has a kid. I said, "Wow, Lord, God, so like God knows no what can stop me." And then I didn't end my life then, and um, God kind of like upgraded me instead of a car. I lost all my wealth already. Ah, then I I had to pick myself up because of that. He kind of upgraded me to a personal cubicle. I got my own workspace. I got my own. Yeah, this is the one. <laughs> Got a personal cubicle, my own workspace, no boss. So then I started this Kermit Wan Tami. Yeah, and then uh, it was a good idea, but God was not involved. I tried my best, but then I tried to look for a lot of people to help. Nobody helped. But then out of desperation, I messaged all the bloggers lah. Then he came. <laughs> Back then I didn't know him. I thought he was. How come I message nobody reply? Only this one was Jin Eng. It's called Bo Eng. Yeah, like. <laughs> Message today, next day come already. Ah yeah, lah. This one lah, I think, bossy me lah one. But I didn't know lah. Who like the talk about you? You know, I thought how good lah. He come, and then he 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 kind of helped me talk here and there, and then he also invited me to church. Yeah, so we went to SJSM. Back then, he haven't helped me block yet. So he invite me to church first. Jin Kiang, let's go. So I just I ask you him ah okay lah. Then I was talking to him. I just you will block for me. Yeah yeah. I will help you. I help you. Okay okay. Then I go. And then I was I still remember I was like still smoking inside my van or like what? Now inside the church, smoking smoking. I just go and please him. I was sitting at the front. He brought me to sit in the front. Oh yeah, why you bring me? I don't want to go. Don't want to do anything. No, he said yeah yeah. Just sit there. He said here God can touch you. I wow really okay. I went there. Wow! Then chill, qua chill, qua. Suddenly, wow! Backside, I just keep crying. I don't know why, no. What are I so pious? Ang Kong Xiao, I'm just like, I keep like, don't know what to do. Then, then typical Singaporean, he got altar calling. He said, no, who want to accept Christ? And then this time you can change your life. I got nothing to lose. Hey, how pun how that I go, I go, and then I go in front. And then I just yeah, praise God that day. I wow, so amazing. So next time you all must know how to like hold something, get the person to church first. Then you know, <laughs> no, no, please. We need the Lord also call us to be shrewd in how to praise to share the gospel. Okay, so yeah, and um, going to end already. And then <laughs> I know I think I overrun it. <laughs> so then, yeah, I I I was so confused. I I went home. I was like thinking, wow, why? Why can like that? Why? That I, I told myself it was confirm is the, the song. 
the song just made me like want to you know touch some things in my life that caused me to cry. I said, okay. But doctor did told me, he said, God is real, you know, you just pray and then he will listen to you and he can hear you. I said, wow. Okay, I was closing my shop then. Then, uh, yeah, I was a heavy smoker. Right? I told you I smoked in the van and everything. I was, I, recently, I just tell him, really, oh, why, you, why are you like that? He tell me. <laughs> but I still hiding to see what car he drive that time. You know, I like, yeah, but that's another story. Anyway, so then, uh, yeah, and then after that, I prayed. I prayed, I prayed. I said, God, if you are real, right? I don't know what happened yesterday, but if you can, right? I don't ask for money. La. I say this smoking, everybody knows. So I say, if can, you help me take away. And then I will believe you. That's what I said. Well, lo and behold, I tell you, you all must really, that's why there's a saying, uh, be careful of what you pray for. This is real. And God answers, He really answers. I, that, day, I, that night, I say, the next day, uh, you know, morning, I mean, if people who ever smoked before, the, the standard routine, you go to the toilet, you light a cigarette. Wow, hey, why the cigarette like, taste wrong? And I think, hey, maybe I never close properly. I go down, buy one new packet, I try, still taste different. Wow, I tell you, then after that, I was like, when I go and start my shop, open everything, then after I go to the smoking corner, got the smoke came and I smell, wow, I gagged there, like, wow. And I was like, what is this, man? And I think, wow. I think, 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 then I think, oh. Confirm si Zame Long Kong Wei. Then I like. Why well, I said, but but finally Yao Liao Lo. If you can do this, uh, I I how not to believe? Then I like, and I you must understand. I go to prison four five times. No, if I can quit, long time ago quit. This one is smoke. I can buy any time. I can. I don't have to quit. And it's, you know, but this one is like just suddenly I cannot smoke. Eh, wow! Oh, I tell you, I wow, oh, God, all all God's glory, and that's when. I made the choice. I got baptized. Yeah. And yeah, the doctor. Lah. So you see, this was back then when I like kind of knew him. After I know the doctor who blocked right now, I become like that now. <laughs> <laughs> he teach me to eat, never have teach me to exercise. So <laughs> he, he got tell me to exercise. <laughs> A lot of people encourage me. Yeah, so um okay, okay, I just need to cut. And then, yeah, for people who, um, for me, la, now it speaks to me, money, I, I used to be very tight and uh, by money. Uh, yeah, now I realize money is like, you know, something that you, 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 money can do a lot of things, but there's certain things that you cannot do. Like you can buy a bed, but you cannot buy sleep, you know. I got a very expensive bed last time when I was rich, yeah. So can buy you books, cannot buy you knowledge, can buy you food, but cannot buy you appetite. Most importantly, can buy you a very nice house, right? but it cannot buy you a home. And yeah, so then now doctor always like give me Bible verses to, and all the, the Bible verses is so amazing where it really speak to you, you can't deny. You, like it will speak to you one way or another. So like, you know, doctor every time he got send me this, like what Apostle Paul wrote, examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good and abstain from every form of evil. Every now and then I still fall lah. But again, the doctor and the community that I'm surrounded with helps me to um, kind of like journey. And yes, I am able to now uh, found. I'm lost, but I'm always found by people who God put me around with. And it is now, you know, this kind of verses that, that promises us that God is always there. And this God that we are dealing with is not a God that will just, you know, he invites you, a sinner, to his house, to, to, to his presence. Yeah, and he will surely do it. So now this is the thing that I'm doing. I already no longer sell one tummy. I pray God lead me to because if I still continue sell one tummy, I cannot evangelize. You know, you zi mi, you zi ka gu de mi nua, no? you cannot tell him about the gospel. I fix car. I fix, I can slowly then I tell him that I haven't I, you know, until he won, no, that kind of thing. So I got more time to share. Yeah, so now this is what I do. And yeah, this is the end and uh, my family. Yeah, my mum. You see the center one, that one? Jin Xiao Lian, oh, yeah. Oh, my mum. Yeah. Doctor is older than my mum. <laughs> but praise God and uh, yeah, thank God for changing my, my life. <laughs> the next person that is going to come up is amazing also. You know, God today uh, provide a very good show for you. One is the living problem. 
Why is it zona ului ah? See me all the worldly problem. This one, next one is the when you mati that problem. He, 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 I don't want to give you all too much info, but Victor, my brother, he's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay, hi everyone. Okay, uh, it is tough to speak after him because he take up most of the time, <laughs> all the time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, this is my story. Okay. Uh, how lost I was. Uh, okay. My journey towards Christianity has been nothing short of miraculous. Okay. Okay. I was a staunch Buddhist uh, when I was younger. At the peak of my Buddhist faith, uh, I collected more than 60 Thai Buddhist amulets and artifacts uh, worth thousands of dollars. I frequent temples both locals and, and uh, overseas, but by His grace, the Lord, through a series of events, uh, stopped me in my tracks and called me to follow Him. So, to give you some background, uh, back in 2013, okay, I had a near fatal medical condition. Okay. I was diagnosed with myocarditis. It was a viral infection of the heart, uh, which caused permanent damage to the heart muscles. I was in ICU for three days and my heartbeat was hovering at 20 beats a minute. Okay, so I was conscious, but I couldn't do anything. I know people were walking around me, but I can't do anything. I was just like, you know, hibernating. Okay. Okay, but uh, I was but I managed to pull through and I was subsequently discharged. However, my heart has weakened uh, until now. So my heart only uh, works at 60% strength. Okay, so if you all see me in public next time, don't come from behind. Don't, Victor, like that, uh, show, show, show drop one. Come from the front. Uh, Victor, I say, hey, okay. Okay, 60% strength, uh, so don't come from behind. Okay. 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 Then in uh, November of 2014, okay, I had an out-of-body experience while I was sleeping. In the middle of the night, I suddenly saw a bright light and I found myself floating towards it. I was like wondering what is this? So basically, it's, uh, it felt very good. I was very comfortable. Then I looked around. My body was diagonally behind me. Okay? And my feet was through my wall. I was like, where am I? You know, it felt so nice. And there was this light, and there was nothing beyond the light. There wasn't all the idols that I prayed to. There wasn't a gate. There wasn't Jesus. There wasn't a throne or whatever thing, just bright light. I was in the round for about 10 or 15 seconds. You know, it's a tuck, you know, like going and coming back, going, coming back, going, coming back. After that, I felt myself snap back into my body. Then it felt, it felt weird because I know it's not a dream. It's too real to be a dream. And then, but I know that uh, something is wrong. And I was scared. I was worried. And I couldn't move. I know it was you know, roughly about two to four hours that I couldn't move. Because I can hear my neighbors leaving the house. I can hear the cars you know, moving off downstairs. I can hear buses, everything. But I just couldn't move. So it's about, you know, like uh, after two to four hours, I start to be able to wiggle my fingers, my toes. And then I slowly crawl out a bit. And then, you know, I was thinking, okay, I should just wash up and go to the nearest clinic. Okay, I know I cannot drive because you know what? Something happened to me while I was, you know, behind the wheel. So I, you know, I searched which is the nearest clinic, and uh, that is where I walked into Doctor Leslie's clinic. <laughs> yeah, that's how I met him. Okay, so uh, really, his clinic is the one that is nearest to my place. I, I have no idea that there's, there was a clinic at the place that he is, you know, that he decided to put his uh, clinic. Okay, so. It's tough for me to walk to a clinic to want to tell the doctor, doctor, last night, uh, in my sleep, I saw a light. You know. Who can do that? I was, I, I was just thinking, you know, maybe the, he would ask me, you know, do you drink alcohol last night? <laughs> Did a fan hit your head last night? But you know, I, just, I just thought about it. I said, okay, just tell you straight. I said, doctor, uh, I had a myocarditis last year, and last night I saw the light in my sleep. And then, you know, okay, you're, some may know him well, some may not. Lah, so. This is what I saw. He was looking at me, then he took out the glasses. 
Then he fold his arm, cross the leg, then he rocked on the chair, and look upwards. I was thinking, to see me. Okay. So what he said, uh, he said, uh, okay. After examining me, he suggested that I go to A and E for a thorough checkup. But before sending me to the hospital, he explained to me that I had an out of body experience. Okay. So basically, he said that uh, I've actually died, and my spirit had left my body, and I was going to meet God. Okay. I didn't know what was that. Okay. He then told me the good news that Jesus had died for all my sins, and I should settle my accounts with God. Well, I still had a chance because you know, if my heart stopped again, I may not have another chance. At the time, I didn't. I don't fully understand what he was trying to do. La. But he said he wanted to pray for me. I said, okay. I was thinking like, as long as I had to pray for the prayer, you know. I scared. Uh, he prayed and then the bill came out, a uh, $50 prayer. <laughs> so I said, I let him pray, okay. So as long as he can pray, then after that, I just go A&E, okay. Okay. So what happened at A&E? Okay, the test in hospital showed that I had a high level of cardiac enzyme in the bloodstream. Okay, cardiac enzymes are protein enzymes uh, which are released into the bloodstreams by dying heart muscles. So clinically, I was dead. Okay, for a few hours. So when the doctor at the A and E found that, found this enzyme, I was strapped to a bed with a lot of apparatus. I was so scared also because I've seen stretcher, I've seen beds, everything, but not with three monitors, two oxygen tanks underneath. And then he said, "Sir, please lie on top." I said. The one empty, you know, the one, <laughs> no, this one, this one, we need you. So I was put on that. So I was, I was worried, okay. Uh, they had to take my blood sample every three hours, okay. And they cannot take it from the same place. So imagine how many holes they had to do. One here, after that, the next one here, then next one here. So, and I was there for two and a half days, okay. So you can imagine how many holes, they, because uh, they had to make sure that the protein enzyme level dropped. If it's constant, means that my muscles are slowly dying. If it's going up, means that more of my heart muscles are dying. That means I will need to go into the operating theater. But it slowly decreases, decreases, decreases until a level which they feel that is comfortable for them, they release me. So I was released to go back home to rest for two months. They said, but if anything, please go back to the hospital. Okay. So, okay, now is the start of my journey towards Christ. Okay, although I was in the clinic and doctor did a sinner spray for me. Okay, I did not understand that I had become a Christian. Okay, I don't know. He was he prayed, ma. I was already Kong Kong already. He said he pray. Okay, okay. And I still went to temples and pray, lah. Okay. So, and I still go to the same clinic because it's nearest to my house, ma. Don't have to drive. Okay. I know he will preach. Okay. I know because, but I'm not worried because outside got patients, ma. Correct, not? The most I give him 15, 20 minutes. They have, to, you know, as long as you don't have to, you know, like. Cough twenty dollars, no everything. Then prayer free. Yeah, okay, I can go. Okay, most important. Okay, so it was in uh, 2016. Okay, after visiting him uh, for two years already, then he said, "Vic, it's time you take a serious consideration." Then I was thinking, "Okay, like, the doctor is such a noble person. Okay, he's been such a nice man to ask nicely without being pushy." So I said, "Okay, doctor, I'll go once. If I don't like you, ask me again." I said, "Yes." Okay, so I go. So I went to church and then the, the sermon that they hit me very hard. I was like, wow, I need to go. I said, Barkin, I come next week. Okay, second week go, <laughs> wow, so soon again. So I said, okay, never mind. I just go and listen first. Because, you know, free one, I know you pay to go to church. <laughs> the first, this is the first part. Okay, never mind. Okay, so then I, I start to witness, uh, witness many miraculous events uh, before my eyes. Then I even uh, started going to cell group. Okay. So uh, this is one of his uh, favorite pictures, he and the bodyguard. Okay, this is one of the cell group. Uh. So uh, this is where I met my brother Raymond and the other cell group members. Uh. But one of the most significant events was when a traveling prophetess ministered at the cell group meeting. Okay, traveling prophetess. Elaine from the Philippines. Never met us before. I never met her. No one met her before. Okay, uh, we sat in one semicircle. So she went around ministering to everyone, one by one. I was sitting at the end. I also don't know why I was at the end. Zong Tou Si, you know, yeah, last one. So they pray, pray. Raymond was there, you know. I tell you, I must share. Because you all, all must memorize his face. Uh. Okay, I was still new, you know. I only went to church in June, July. The cell group is the 8th of August. When she was praying for Raymond, this fellow cried, you know. Cried, never mind, the peace high, you know. <laughs> then he pulled back. Pull back. Like that, wow, la, pee -tui, ah, pee -tui, sorry. Pee -tui. Wow, whatever. Then you try to clean his eye. Wow, I was like, then I was thinking, 
what what can happen? That made a guy so big size cry until no image. <laughs> and then like wow, I was like I was scared already, you know. Then one by one, one by one, they came to me. I was like, wow, sell it, buy sell it, you know. <laughs> okay. But you know what happened? When Pastor Elaine came to me, she just put her palm on my chest, and then she punched my heart. She, uh, she punched her fist, the 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 the, the palm like that twice. She said, "Brother, God had punched your heart twice to get your attention. Finally, you're here." Wow, oh, the hair stand that time. Oh, I was like, "Okay, cannot play already." <laughs> okay, so then uh, these words were an. You know, it was encouraging to me uh, because a few days later, I actually counseled a friend of mine who had just lost a newborn baby. She gave it to the kid. The kid had some, you know, organ stuff, everything. So the kid couldn't even make it past 24 hours. So the kid passed on. So she was grieving and uh, actually went to talk to her. Lah. And then, you know, I never had this way of wanting to talk to someone. But it was there and then I told her, I said, uh, Shan, Trust me, your son is in a better place. I was there. Okay, who, who can say that here? No one, right? She heard that, she smiled, she cried. Then from that point I know, okay, that uh, this is where I have my strengths, uh, and this is where God wants me. Uh. Okay, okay. since then, I, uh, then in the year itself, I decided, okay, my tool, I'll just get myself baptized. So I spoke in the you know, St. John's Samaragos Church baptism service as well. So this was uh, 2016. Okay, very fast. Huh? Yep. Okay. Okay, since then I realized I can relate and help those who are grieving. I've uh, visited patients in hospitals, praying for them and, uh, you know, and I even arranged for a pastor to baptize a patient just three days before he passed on. Okay. Uh, I even, you know, there are, I am still praying for those in hospitals. And uh, today, actually today, is the, my first day at the St. Andrew's Nursing Home. I'm there for a half-year volunteer mission. Okay, okay. now I want to share something. Okay, this is an interesting thing that I want to share with you all. Okay, quiet fisherman. Are there times when you f felt lost and wondering where God is? Or if there's a God? Okay, this was after I became a Christian. Uh. Okay. One day I was bogged down with work issues. Uh, I decided to let myself have a quiet time and do what I like to do. So I like to go fishing. So I went to a local reservoir and, uh, you know, but there wasn't any catch that day. I was like, I was just praying, uh, God, <laughs> so big the place, one fish also cannot give me. Really, I asked that day. I said, okay, never mind. I go to another place. Okay. So I went to another reservoir, just drive there. Okay. And then I decided to use a different lure. Okay. A lure is a thing that we used to attract fish. Okay. So what's the lure is uh, this metal thing is supposed to rotate in the water that mimics a fish, you know, all the flashing thing. Okay. It's just a 10 gram lure. Okay. Then when I was casting for about an hour, I was like very tired. I say, okay, like, let's go. I just start keeping. When I was leaving, I saw this angor fishing at the other side. I had to walk past him towards the car park. So I asked him how was his catch. Then he said, nothing. But there was a big fish down there you can try. Uh, the fish won't take my lure. I said, okay, I'm going to try. So within, within like five casts, okay, my, my type of fishing is very simple. Is I cast there, retrieve back, cast, retrieve. So each time is maybe less than one minute. Less than five casts, I got this. Okay. Then when I got this fish, I'll start looking around. Now. Where's the angmo? He's nowhere to be found. Okay, okay. All the Christian here, do you all know what is this uh, story talking about? It's when Jesus said, "Cast your net." Then I'm like, the first thing I think, like, okay, Lord, I heard you already. You really give me a fish this time. Okay, and this is by far my biggest fish in a local reservoir, legal area. I don't do illegal stuff. <laughs> not, not like my. Okay, we don't say. <laughs> 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 okay, so this is this is a very rare catch in a legal area. Okay, anyway, for me, is I catch, I take picture, and I release the fish. Okay, uh, the fish don't die. The fish gets got pain. Okay, those who ask me, uh, the fish like that won't pay. All the for all the ladies, your 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 you know the the ear piercing right, your won't die from me right. Okay, same thing. The fish also. Okay, okay. So 
Okay. Anyway, uh, this picture was taken by a passerby, la, not the Angmo. Okay, because I couldn't find Angmo. And really, it was impossible for someone to just leave with, you know, without me noticing. We had to keep all the stuff and he walked past me to the car park. There's no way. So I, that day, I really felt God telling me, nah, happy that way. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you, God. Okay, okay. Yeah, finishing, ah. Uh. Okay, then uh, photography is my other hobby. Okay, I was out one night trying to uh, take a picture. Actually, it was a very bad, bad evening that day. Then I just asked Lord, I said, Lord, give me your miracle. This is what he gave me that night. So for all the Christians out there, okay, be faithful in your prayer and really pray as much as you can. Okay, thank you. I pass the mic back to Doctor. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, oh, the mic's on again, great. Uh, can you please uh, give another round of applause for Raymond, Victor? It is amazing when a person comes to meet Jesus. When Zacchaeus met Jesus, his life was changed. You see these two young men, and I've been very privileged in the last three years to have met uh, two of them, and I, a few more men that I uh, mentor. That's my uh, other passion. It's actually my first passion. Then the, the food and the, the medical are uh, secondary to my passion for God. Because it is amazing when Jesus finds a lost soul and then he saves it. You know, in, in, you look at a person like Raymond, society will tell you, this guy ah, bo kiu liao. You know, society will just say, you put him in prison and just leave him there for good lah, so that the rest of us can just get on with our life without him messing it up. Right? Cheating people and all these things. That's what society will say. But when God looks at Raymond, he saw potential for a man of God. Someone he can change. Someone he can change to, to influence the world. Oh, my slides. My slides. Okay, so the verse today, right? The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. To seek and to save the lost. So when you lose something, there are two parties involved. One is the loster. Alright? The person who lost something is the loster. <laughs> and then the other, the thing that he lost is the lost T. There's a loster and there's a lost T. The person who lost something and the thing that was lost. Correct? Okay, so in this story of Zacchaeus, who is the loster? Who's the loster? Who, who is the person who lost something? God, right? God lost something. And then who is the lost T? It was Zacchaeus, right? So you have the loster and the lost T. So God is the loster. God lost something. What did God lose? God lost humanity. How did God lose humanity? This is where we go back to the beginning of the Bible. Remember I told you, the whole Bible is about God seeking to save the lost. Then, in the beginning of the Bible, we found out what God lost. When God made the world, He made the world beautiful. And then He created human beings. And human beings were created in His image because He wanted human beings to represent Him in the world. So the human being was supposed to be good, it's supposed to be righteous. It's supposed to be just. You know, it's supposed to bring beauty to the world. But there was rebellion because Adam and Eve refused to obey God. Eve took the apple, ate the apple. And that is the picture of rebellion. That means God said, listen to me. This is not good for you. This apple, if you eat it, you will surely die. But they didn't believe God. And they went, the rebellious uh, sin, in, you know, the rebellion in them just went ahead and took that that fruit, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And therefore, sin came into the world, God lost humanity. And the rest of the Bible is about how God wanted to win back humanity again. And in the earlier, uh, earlier part of the book of Luke, where Jesus introduced the heart of God as the person who has lost humanity, 
He, he introduced it as a story, three stories, in fact, which is actually one story. He told them about a man who had, lo- had 100 sheep and he lost one sheep. And then he, had, he left the 99 to go and look for that one sheep. And when he found that sheep, he put it on his shoulder and he rejoiced with all his friends, you know. And he said, heaven rejoices over one, one lost soul that comes home. And then he told them another story about a woman who had 10 coins. Uh, Jesus is very fair. Lah. He tells one story for the men and he tells one story of a woman. The men go out to work, right? The woman stay at home. So the woman had 10 coins. She lost one. And, and she lost that one coin. She lit the lamp and then she went whole house. Have you all lost something at home before? Isn't it amazing? How can you lose that one thing? Then look, 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 look. look. Like just when you found, when she found that coin, she called her friends, come have a party. Actually, how much the party cost? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he cost the coin. He cost all the... And, he, and Jesus said again, heaven rejoices when one person comes back to God. You see, the heart of the father, the father lost his children and now he's out to look for them. And then the third story, the climax. He told the story of the prodigal son, right? This is the prodigal son. This man had two sons. The younger son told his father one day, I'm going to take my inheritance and I'm going to leave the family. I don't have anything to do with you. He's the paikia, like Raymond. Right? And he went out and he did all the bad things, like Raymond. Okay? <laughs> okay? Okay? He went to do all the bad things. And he spent all the money and then he had to go in. He was so poor, he got to feed the pigs. Then he came to his senses. He said, Ayah, my father's servants eat better than me. Why don't I just go back and be a servant? Okay? So uh, in, the, in that kind of society, when you do such, such a thing to your family, uh, the family disown you, you know. Even in Chinese society also. This, this, this son, uh, no more already, dead already, gone already. Right? So this is what, when Jesus told this story, everybody was expecting him to say, uh, you know, that the father going to scold the son, make sure that he, he knows of his sin, make sure he pays for his crimes, you know, before he even accepts him back. But no, Jesus told this story this way. He said that the father saw him when he was coming home far, far off. And the father ran out and he embraced him. Because in Jesus, we see the heart of God. Jesus is actually God become man, right? The word of God made flesh. God Himself came to earth to dwell among us and to tell us what the real heart of God is towards all of us. It is a heart of love. It is a heart that wants you to come home. But in that story, he also told them uh, 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 that there was another brother who was not happy, right? The person, the brother who was not happy is the one that always followed the rules, you know? He's at home. He's always followed his father's rules. And the father... uh, Never even give him a party, never give him a small little goat to have a party. You know? and here it is, this son came home after squandering his wealth uh, and the father welcomed him back. He's angry. He's like Victor. Always do everything right, right? So one is like Victor, one is like Raymond, the two sons. Both are lost. Even the older son is lost. He was lost. Even though he's at home, he's lost because he doesn't know the father's heart. Uh, the older son is like the coin. He's, the coin is at home and yet lost, right? And the sheep is out, and it's lost. So the sheep is like Raymond, the younger son, and the, and the coin is like Victor, the old son. So they're two sons. Okay, everything starting to gel together already. Yeah? Okay, so this amazing story tells us uh, that God's heart for all his children, uh, that they, all, they want all of them to come home. That's why the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, we are, the modern society is lost. Okay? I, don't know where I, I, I don't know where I am going. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm on my way. Can you all relate to this? You wake up in the morning, first thing you check your handphone, then after that, before you know it, uh, the day goes by already, right? you da, 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 go to work, blah, 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 then, then go for lunch, blah, 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 meet your friend, then this is the appointment, that appointment. Then at the end of the day, <sighs> tired, sleep. Next day, repeat. Repeat again and again and again. You don't ever ask yourself, what am I doing all these things for? Where am I eventually going to end up? Right? Like Victor. Never ask the question until he saw the light. Then he go, oh, you mean to say one day I'm going to die? I mean, everybody knows 
we are all going to die one day. And yet, how many of us have actually really, really sat down and really think about it? If I'm going to die one day, where am I going to end up? Okay? And this problem in our society, and, and, and this is what uh, you know, society wants to lure you into a, a sort of false sense of reality. You want to forget about the realities of life that there's one day there's this thing called death is going to visit all of us. You just want to keep you as busy as you can, doing all your things, all your games, la, playing all your games, la, doing your work, la, making money. La, you can do all the things. just want to take this reality away from you. Don't even want to think about it, right? All right? And so we resulted in a society where people are lost, spiritually lost. And we have suicide rates going up. Okay, I'll skip these two slides for, the, for time. <clears throat> this is how the Bible describes humanity, that we are dead in our trespasses and sins in which we once walked, following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. It means where, when we grew up, when we, grew, when we are born into this world, we are born into a sinful world. Okay? And like Raymond, he born into the world. He doesn't know any better. Okay? His father left when he was a young boy. He had no person to tell him, this is the way to live. Righteousness, do good, don't be naughty and all these things. Nobody tell him. In fact, all of us, we, when you are born into this world, we are born to be good. God made us to be good, but we are born with a propensity to just incline to do the bad things. And so humanity is lost. And we are lost because we all once live in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. So we follow our very basic animal instinct. The animal instinct say, oh, got food, eat, got food, eat, got food, eat. Now, I love food, but I also control, you know. <laughs> so got to look after what you eat, got to exercise regularly, right? The doctor is, uh, food is good. God created food. For everyone to enjoy, but within limits, right? You, you, you like Wagyu steak, yeah, but you cannot eat Wagyu steak three times a day, every day, because you're going you're gonna to get put on the weight, right? So you got to eat a balanced meal. So, so everything was created for good, but we need to put a boundary around it. Okay, but this world that we are born into is telling us, if it feels good, do it. If it feels good, do it. There are no limits, no boundaries. If you're happy, you do it. Just as long as you are happy. Right? There's no God to hold you accountable. That's what the world is telling us, all of us. And so we are lost. This was, uh, this was the rescue of the, fifth, uh, the 12 uh, footballers and the coach, right? 13 of them, in the cave last year in uh, Thailand. Right? They were in the cave for nine days. Darkness. No way to get out. This is a picture of humanity. We are in total darkness. We are trapped. There's no way, there's no means for us to rescue ourselves. And this boy related his story. By the tenth night, we were losing patience, hope, physical energy, and courage. We could not anything, do anything to help. The only thing that I could do was pray. I pray, Lord, I'm only a boy. You are mighty God. You are holy. You are powerful. Right now, I can't do anything. May you protect us. Come and help us all 13. And very soon after that, in the darkness, suddenly, a light. And suddenly, a voice in the darkness. Can you imagine the relief? So suddenly, there's light. That someone came to save us. Someone came to save us. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. When you're in darkness, you can't see where you're going. Jesus comes to us and say, I don't only give you the light, I am the light. If you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And Jesus says also, I am the way and the truth and the life. Can you imagine in that cave, in that utter darkness, the people who come to rescue them, right? Suddenly whipped up a map and a torchlight and they gave it to the boys. They say, here's a torchlight, here's the map out of the cave. Good luck. Then he went off. <laughs> Can you imagine that? How do you get out of darkness? You need someone to come and take your hand, right? 
and rescue you. It is not, you see, religion is not a method. It is not instructions. It is not about, oh, how do I find God? I need to do this, do this, do this, take this journey, do this, that, do that and the other, and maybe I will find God. Religion is not about that. Christian faith is about God coming to seek and to save the lost. Jesus says, I am the way. He didn't say, I will show you the way or I'll give you instructions so they can find the way. Jesus says, I'm the way. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it's not true, I, whether, whether I tell you that I'll go and prepare a room for you, and if I prepare a room for you, I'll come back myself and take you to where I am. I am the way. Take my hand. I will show you the way. The way to who? I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to me. No man comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is a way, not to a destination. Jesus is the way to a person. Jesus is the way back to Father, Father God, who is looking for all of us. And home is not a place, it's a person. It's a relationship. Our two young men here grew up, and Victor didn't share this, but he also grew up without a father. Father left very young. Okay? And, and, we, and, and for those of us who have fathers, we are very grateful. For those of us who don't have fathers, we can grow up with this, what we call an orphan spirit. That we feel that we are abandoned. We have no direction. We don't, we don't belong to anybody. And, and so you are very, very lost. You all watch Lion King, right? Who hasn't watched Lion King? The Lion King, come on. Everybody's, on, oh, you haven't? Ah. Where are you? Go and watch, go and watch. <laughs> The, the, the climax of the movie, uh, those of you who watch, remember, right? Uh, Simba, Simba the lion, was very dejected, very discouraged, right? Was very lost. And uh, the baboon, what's the baboon's name? I forgot his name. What was the baboon's name? Rafiki. My, my son is very good with this. The baboon said, the father has never left you. I'll show you the father. And then he, he showed him, uh, 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 looked into the water and said, I don't see my father, I see myself. And then suddenly there's something in the sky, a father appeared in the sky. And, the, and the, the thing that the father told him was very, very significant. He said, you have forgotten me. He said, I haven't forgotten you. He said, you've forgotten me because you've forgotten who you are. You've forgotten who you are. You are my son. And so when, when Jesus comes to seek and to save the lost, he comes to remind us we are children of God. We are sons and we are daughters of God. You might have forgotten it, but you were born with the instinct. God gave you the instinct because he, 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 he created you and I to be His children. We have forgotten it. Today, He wants to remind you, and tell you again, you are my son, you are my daughter. If you are lost, come home. Time to come home. Because... Jesus is here to seek and to save the lost. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So today, we have a few characters, right? We have Zacchaeus, who was very rich, well-to-do. He had everything that materially you can ask for, yet he felt there was something missing. Maybe some of you here feel like that. You know, you're successful in your career, you're doing very well, you've got a great family, you've got a good career, uh, a company, enough money in the bank, few cars, maybe few properties, whatever. Or maybe not so much, but you're comfortable. And yet, something's missing. That's like you feel like Zacchaeus. Maybe it's time for you to meet Jesus. Or maybe you can identify with Raymond. <laughs> or maybe not as bad as Raymond. Uh, or the prodigal son. You know you are lost. You know, you know you're lost and you need help, okay? Because you've gotten yourself into this terrible situation for whatever reason, made mistakes in your life, you know, because you followed the course of the world. What the world told you is, hap uh, is, is most, most important. You followed the, what the world tells you, oh, you've got to make a lot of money and just forget about everything else, just focus on money. And because of that, you have gotten yourself into a, a, a terrible situation or or you could, uh, you could be doing uh, other naughty things, lah, 
Okay, we don't need to go into all the details. But because of the things that you've done, you are in a bad shape. You are like the prodigal son. Today, it's also time to come home. Or you, maybe you can relate with the older brother. You've always done everything right in your life. Everything. You come to church, you do everything right, you know. You can even come to church and be lost because you still do not know the heart of the Father. Right? So I want to end my sermon. I invite everyone to just close your eyes. And we're going we're to we're gonna pray right now. Maybe a musician. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray for all those of you who, are, who maybe feel that today you want to respond to, to the Lord Jesus. Just close your eyes. Every eyes close, every head bow. In the story of Zacchaeus, the picture is this. Imagine you are there. Jesus is about to come by. Jesus is about to come by. Okay? If you feel that you want to meet him, right? Symbolically, right? Do what Zacchaeus do, did and climb that tree so that Jesus can see you. All right? You don't have a tree to climb. So can I just ask you, for those of you who feel that in your heart you just feel, yes, today I want to respond to Jesus. You just quickly put up your hand and put it down. It's a symbol that you are climbing up that tree, climbing up the sycamore tree to see Jesus. And Jesus says the next thing to you, I want to come into your house today. The Bible says, Jesus stands at the door and knock. Whoever can hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. Today, if you meet Jesus, He will come into your life. He will cleanse you of all your sins and He will put the Holy Spirit into you so that you and God can be in a loving relationship again so that you can come home and not be lost anymore. In case anybody else wants to put up your hands, want to climb that tree and let Jesus... Anybody else, just put down your hands. Very good. Uh, let me pray for everyone. And after I pray... I'm going to invite you all to come up to the front here so that the pastors can pray for you personally. Father, we give you thanks and praise you, Lord, that you are God of compassion, of mercy. You, God, you love your creation so much. It pains your heart to see your creation lost. And so you send your only son, Jesus, to come and seek and to save the lost. I thank you, Father, for today that you are here, that Jesus, you are here and you have come to seek and to save those which are lost. And you're wanting to enter in and to sup with them. For those, of the, for those brothers and sisters who have, op- uh, who have put up their hands, we pray, Father, a blessing on their lives. And uh, uh, we just give you thanks and praise that you are God of mercy and justice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you. You know... <laughs> I don't think it is uh, coincidental that some of you are here. I can feel the Father's hearts all through the message. There are many of us who live our life as if we are orphans. But you know what? You have never been. Because God the Father loves you from the eternity began. And that He's wooing you and He's waiting for you and He's crying out to each one of you and say, My son and my daughter, it's time for you to come home. Come and experience me. Come and embrace me. And let me embrace you so that you know my heart for you. My heart for you. We'll sing the song goodness of God as a response and as we sing the songs really the goodness of God is running after you because God has never given up on you and after the songs I will call and invite you to come forward and those of us who have never received the Father's love 
and want to receive Jesus into your life and experience the love of God. And I invite you to come forward. There are some of us, perhaps we may be living believers for a long time, but living as orphans. We need a fresh touch of the Father's love. I will invite you to come forward as well. And so for those of us who want to receive Jesus, come to my right. And those of us who want to receive and experience the love of the Father, come to my left. Is that okay? That's all right. Been, been Christians for a while but you know has been living as an orphan 
have not experienced the Father's love and the heart of the Father in your life, or perhaps, perhaps we are just just lost that and you need that fresh encounter and experience and the embrace of the Father I would like to invite you to come right here right now on this side of the stage if this message speaks to you and that you have been so far removed like a lost sheep and the lost son it's time to come forward here LGL It's time to come and ask for the fresh touch of the Father's love into your life I'd like to open this space for you to come forward and to be prayed for Please come Father's heart is here, I can feel it. Father's wants to touch you in a fresh new way. Check it. Receive his love today. For the Lord never give us a spirit of orphan, but sonship. The parable of the lost coin is this. The coin is part of a chain of a wedding where the lady will wear it. It has such a sentimental value. And the coin is lost, the chain is incomplete. I just feel that from that message, there are some among us here has been so far removed from God. There's an incompleteness in your life each until the one coin is found. So I'd like to invite those of us who are experiencing something in our life of, you know, living life but never find that completion, the satisfaction. There's something always missing, not something not fixed, not, not complete. If you're going through a passage of your life in that sense, I'd like to invite you to come forward to be prayed for. And ask God, say, God, you who made me, you know my life, then complete my life. I'd like to invite you to come forward as well. Jesus, please come or to be prayed for to, re to receive the Father's love. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Come, let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you for these precious moments. The Lord, you never, never cast your eye away from each one of us, but that we know that your eyes are always upon us. You are the fathers in the prodigal stories whose eyes never left the horizon. And you know from the silhouette, from the far away image of your son, you ran. You ran. And that Lord, we just know that God, you never give up on us, nor you leave us, nor forsake us. That Lord, you chase us with a relentless love that you pursue us to the very end. And so, Father God, we want to thank you for our message today and the reminder of the lost and found. And Lord, we just want to ask that God, you turn the lostness in our life so that we may turn to you once again. Whatever that is incomplete in our life, Lord, help us to come back to you again. 
and to find the completion that's only in you. And so, Lord Father, we want to come to you this afternoon. Jesus, you say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Lord Father, give us the way, the truth, and the life. And give, it, give us life abundantly, as you have promised. As you have promised. And in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Give Lord a clear offering. Well done. The service is over. You know, the front is still open for any one of us who want to come forward to be prayed for. Um, you know, we will love to pray with you and journey with you. And go in the peace of God and may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you in all the fullness of His goodness be with you. Amen.